The footage in this video is transformative and is protected under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976 for purposes of criticism, comments or news reporting. Hello everyone, welcome to another video. So I'm continuing the saga with this uh, Channel 7 news here. We got my old mate Denham Hitchcock here. So if anyone doesn't know what's been going on, check out my last four or five videos. Uh, Channel 7 News did a hit piece on vegans. Now it was the most biased hit piece I've ever seen and I've been, you know, working with the media for a little while now. And this was just so obviously biased. And then, lo and behold, we uncovered that Channel 7 media is owned by a billionaire beef tycoon. So it all started to come together. And also, the person who sort of interviewed me, the journalist, uh, journalist, Denim Hitchcock, he uh, was a very, very avid, very, very passionate meat eater. Um... It was the most biased piece of garbage I've ever seen in my entire life. Now, Denham, old mate Denham has recently re re uh, wrote an article. Bit of a poor me article here, bit of a I'm a victim article. But let's just go through it together and see what Denham's got to offer. Vegan activists target TV reporter after show is broadcast. Wow. Now this is interesting, Target. Do you know what that show actually did to vegans to be targeted? It was the most biased piece of garbage I've ever seen. Which left David and his family helpless. How the hell do you sleep at night? Uh, making vegans out to be these, you know, extremists, right? If you if you watch the way they edited it, horror music for the activist. What do you think happened to vegans after that? We got sledged left, right and centre. I got death threat after death threat. And you're the one complaining, dude? You're the one complaining? That was a biased hit piece against vegans. You know what, they, they, they so cleverly omitted the animals in that hit piece, and now you're complaining that you've been getting emails. Well, I don't care. You deserve them. You being a part of that hit piece, that biased garbage hit piece against vegans, against veganism, and didn't even mention the animals, you deserve heat for that, okay? Now, if you want to work in that industry, the industry of, you know, making biased anti-vegan hit piece nonsense and not objectively reporting on the facts, that's what you're gonna get. So this is the article here. So underneath his uh, photo here, it says TV host Denham Hitchcock was threatened after his show about vegan extremists. Threatened, were ya? Well, I'll produce my death threats, okay, and I'll produce the threats to vegans. Why haven't you put a screenshot of the threats that you've been receiving? Where are they? Show me the threats that you've been receiving from vegans. Here, here we go. This is in quotations. Keep being a walking coffin with a decomposing body in your guts. That must have been what Denham uh, received. Yeah, well, you are a walking coffin with, with a corpse in your stomach. That's exactly what's in your stomach. The dead, rotting, decomposing corpse of an animal who wanted to live, a sentient being. What's the matter with that description? It's accurate. It's objective. I appreciate creative writing, free thinking, and as my old man would say, a nice turn of phrase. It's not a turn of phrase, it's an objective statement. It was sent to me amongst the deluge of emails and messages triggered by last week's Sunday night story on vegan activists. It was the most disgra disgraceful, garbage, biased hit piece I've ever seen, and your media company's funded by a beef mogul, and that's why. The other comments were less imaginative, but most included various forms of wishing me ill. You were promoting the consumption and brutality of animals. You know, we took you to a slaughterhouse, we discussed with you animal ethics, and you still champion meat like it's like a superfood, and you don't really address the violence. See, mo most include various forms of wishing me ill. I don't really agree with anyone going and wishing Denham ill. You know, personally, I don't think that's really an effective way to get through to someone, but, you know, perspective here. Animals are literally getting stabbed, and you're part of a biased hit piece against vegans and didn't even mention the animals, omitted the animals. See, or graphic accounts of how animals are stabbed, murdered, bashed, or raped, which is all true. You don't want to hear the truth about where your steak's coming from, or you just want to enjoy the salty, fleshy, bloody steak on your plate. My Twitter and Instagram threads ran wild with abuse, argument, and counter-argument, the likes of which I've never seen in 24 years of journalism. Well, maybe you should start listening to them, mate. Because this is a massive movement of people who've woken up and, you know, your biased hit piece against vegans was absolutely disgraceful. And you're going to get hit with some truth bombs, mate. People aren't, aren't happy. Most people who are open-minded to see the truth are going to come at you, bro. And that's what you copped. Here we go. This is, I love this one. For compassionate people trying to change the world, they sure are vicious. Wow. That's the pot calling the kettle black, isn't it, mate? What is more vicious, Denim? Wishing you ill? 
wishes. They don't, wishes don't harm anyone, do they? Or us explaining to you the graphic accounts of animals being stabbed, bashed, raped and enslaved. Okay, what's worse? Or your direct actions where you fund the literal murder of thousands of animals over the course of your life. Animals being stabbed, having their children taken from them, being raped, being hacked up into pieces, having to smell their friend's blood and choke on their own blood in their last moments. What's worse? Okay, now, uh, you, it's just pure hypocrisy. But this is their weapon of choice and it is effective. So you agree that vegan advocacy online is effective? Let's just hold that thought. You agree that what vegans do in their advocacy is effective. Our interconnected online world bends and sways to the swell of trolls and minorities who gather in the darkest corners with the loudest voice. The darkest corners with the loudest voice. Hey, you're saying our corner is dark? I think what happens in animal agriculture is the darkest corner ever. Now, just because it's prevalent and most of the mainstream are participating in it, once we shine light on the darkness, then the truth comes out. Veganism is the light, it's not the dark, okay? We want peace, we want compassion, and we're anti-cruelty, anti-slavery, and anti-animal abuse. What do you stand for? Would anyone say this to my face? Unlikely. I catch the bus. I work at Martin Place. I'm easy to find. I would say it to your face. Dude, what? Tell you that, that your food choices are contributing to animal slavery, animal abuse, and animals being stabbed. I don't agree with anyone threatening you, though. I don't think that that's cool if that's what you've received. I haven't seen you post any evidence of threats, though, so we'll have to just, what, take your word for it? I, I can show you evidence. I'd love to have an, another interview with you, mate. You know, me and you on camera together, you know... We'll see, we'll see. In truth, there's something noble in the decision to become vegan. What, there's something noble in not wanting to see animals be stabbed to death? That just seems like common decency to me. Doesn't seem like really that noble. Being a vegan activist is noble. Being a vegan is very neutral. It's just like, I don't want to stab animals. It's like, I don't want to punch people in the face for no reason anymore. You know, I used to when I was a gang member, yeah, I used to be violent, but, but me being non-violent is a neutral. You know, it's just I'm not harming anyone. I'm not really doing good. I'm just not doing any bad. That's what a vegan is, dude. You don't want another animal to be harmed in your name, so you abstain. Yeah, well, 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 unjustified harm, yeah. We know there's harm just from our existence. You know, there's crop deaths and there's other uh, harm that we cause just by existing. But unjustified harm, stabbing an animal in the neck, you know, raping them, t taking their babies away, hanging them upside down by their hoof while they struggle for their last breath. That type of unjustified harm, yeah. Is that noble or is that just common decency? Is that just, you know, a kindergarten level of basic ethics? I love this, I love this sentence here. You don't want another ha animal to be harmed in your name so you abstain. After all, it's your right, your decision, freedom of speech, freedom of choice. What he's implying here, I believe what he's implying here is that freedom of choice, you know? Like I have a freedom of choice to consume animal flesh, you have your freedom of choice to be vegan. Why don't you respect my freedom of choice? You know, your choice has a direct victim of murder, slavery, subjugation. So you could say, well, it's your right, your decision to, you know, kill a dog and eat them. Freedom of speech, freedom of choice. Kill that dog and eat them. You know, what about the dog's decision in this? What about the dog's freedom of choice? What about the pig's freedom of choice? What about the cow's freedom of choice? What about the lamb's freedom of choice? What happens there? They just get it robbed from them. They get their life robbed from them. So you can have your little stick your fingers, your little greasy fingers into your beef ribs. This guy's not even open to veganism. Like he he was very well educated. Joanne uh, got him to watch Dominion. He sat down, had a vegan meal with Joanne and her family. He We discussed ethics in length. He knows what he's contributing to. He's watched Dominion. He still stuck his little greasy fingers into that, the beef ribs and, you know, ugh. Such a shame. What about the choice of others? What gives you the right to demand a vegan world? What gives you the right to demand animals be stabbed in the throat, have their neck hacked open on your behalf? What gives you the right to demand, with your dollar and your you know, taste preference for pig flesh, demand six month old baby pigs be gas chambered to death, scream and struggle and burn from the inside out in a horrible dungeon filled with gas so you can have your bacon sandwich. What gives you the right? We demand a vegan world because we demand justice to animals. Wake up, brother. To break into restaurants and farms, shut down public transport, ruin businesses and properties. Hey dude, if there were humans in there, this would all be justified activism. How are things gonna change if we don't take a stand? How are things gonna change for animals if we don't take a stand? 
We have to do these things. This is what activism is. We, we're forcing social change. It's not going to happen by itself. And I'm sure you'd love it if we were all, all apologists and, you know, sucked up your butt and said, oh, that's great. You eat steak. You do you. We'll do us. You know, freedom of choice, freedom of speech. That's fine. Stab animals all you like. No, that's not how it works. That's not how activism works. And that's not how social change happens. You're the voice for the animals, I hear you say. But are you really? Will this truly make a difference? Yeah, it's making a difference, dude. It is making a difference. We are making a difference. The vegan movement is growing exponentially because of our work, okay? Not because we sat there and stood still, not because we sat there with our mouth shut, because we were out there being active, getting in your face, okay? Showing you the, the slaughterhouses, showing you the slavery, showing you the rapes in the dairy industry. It's because of activists. That's what's making a difference. Here we go. He, he's like, speciesism, heard of it? Now he's gonna act like he knows what speciesism is, which is fine, let's, let's see if he knows. Heard of it? Me neither till I started researching this story. Like racism or sexism, it's inequality or disadvantage due to your species. It's discrimination based on species, buddy. buddy. Discrimination, like racism, discriminating. So treating someone differently based on species. How far do you take that? Let's have a look. Most vegans believe all animals should be equal. Humans, horses, sheep, and field mice. Now, I don't think animals are equal in every way. So that's kind of a straw man, like most vegans, what have you done, have you got statistical evidence on what most vegans believe about all animals? Do I think a fly is the same as a cow? No. Do I think they're equal in their um, value? No. I think their life is just as valuable to them. I think those who have more sentience have maybe have a deeper experience. I just think they all deserve a, an equal right to their own life, not to be enslaved and subjugated, okay? Do I think a small infant has the same capacity to suffer and experience well-being as an adult human being? No. Do I think someone who has got a serious mental disability experiences life in the same way that someone who's fully capable does? No. But do I think they deserve the equal right to freedom and not to be harmed and subjugated and enslaved and raped and have their families separated and scream for their life inside a gas chamber? Yes, I think they deserve that equal right. Here we go. Put them in a pen. It's enslavement. Send them to the butcher. It's murder. Yeah, it's enslavement because they're treated as products. They are property. They, they don't have any liberty. They, like, they are only in that pen as far as it serves the farmer, as far as it s serves the interests of their finances, because they'll all be murdered at, the, at a fraction of their lifespan, hacked up into pieces, and sold at a butcher shop so you can eat their, put your little greasy fingers into their ribs. I don't know how to unravel our world if this was the outcome. Well, dude, it's time to step outside of that little box square that you're in, okay? And start thinking with things with an open mind. You don't mention the environmental destruction beef causes either, do you? You don't mention that. We are a species who once hunted woolly mammoths, so we're a species who once raped and murdered each other and pillaged each other's villages, and you know, that's how civilizations were formed, with massive genocides and holocausts. Are you gonna get, reach back into history and determine what's moral? Conquered a planet and went to the moon. What's going to the moon got to do with ethics? Got to do with the ethics of how we treat animals. You know what I mean? Conflating, you know, Techni technological advances like going to the moon with animal ethics. Yeah, we're advancing. And you know what else is advancing? Our view on morality. The way we apply morals in society is advancing. We don't need to stab woolly mammoths to get a steak these days. We've got plant foods and they're more environmentally sustainable and more ethical. This is interesting. Let's read this all together. We, we, we're a species who once hunted woolly mammoths, conquered a planet and went to the moon now we're afraid to swap flies. Afraid to swap flies. How about we start at being against stabbing a cow in the throat? Why don't you put that there? Like, I love you, you narrow it down to a fly. Do I go and swap flies for no reason? No. Do I think swatting a fly is the same as stabbing an animal in the neck for a burger? No. But I still think they're both unnecessary, but one's a little more on the extreme spectrum, like stabbing a cow in the neck. Swatting a fly, you know, maybe a little bit, you know, th there is a there is a spectrum here, dude. Now, this is awesome. This is awesome. I love how Denham, who doesn't know anything about vegan activism, thinks he knows what the most effective form of e vegan activism is after not having any experience whatsoever. Let's listen to his perspective on something he knows nothing about. The protests this week have only harmed the vegan movement. Oh really? Really, you got evidence for that? Sure, their tiny hive is buzzing with excitement. Their trolls are stomping across the cyber hunting grounds with a war cry of victory. But in the rush to create headlines, 
the intelligent discourse on an alternative diet and lifestyle was lost. No, 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 we are still discussing it. There's been TV interviews, there's been 50,000 views overnight on the Dominion documentary, which was the whole idea of it, okay? People are discussing animal agriculture now. It's all coming to the light. This is what's gonna happen, there's gonna be a clash, okay? Change isn't easy. Change isn't gonna be a walk in the park. It's gonna come to this head-to-head -head clash. There are animals being abused in farms all over the Australia. When we expose that, it's gonna rustle up some leaves, isn't it? It's gonna rustle some leaves. The whole idea of actions like this is to bring eyes to what happens in the dark. Shed some light on the darkness of animal agriculture, and that's what's happening. Couldn't care less what you think about me. Couldn't care less what you think about vegan activists. We just want you to start thinking about what happens in those slaughterhouses and on those farms, and what happens to those victims so you can have your steak. Now this, here we go. I think he's just having a little bit of a sook, to be honest. Will anyone turn vegan because of the protest this week? I doubt it. <laughs> But this is their weapon of choice and it is effective. So you agree that vegan advocacy online is effective? Well, I guarantee you 50,000 people have watched Dominion. Doesn't matter how the vegans act, you watch Dominion, there it is, objective truth about what's going on with animals. I guarantee you there've been new vegans this week. I 100% guarantee it. I 100% guarantee it that this is the start of something huge and it's not the end. People say, you know, this, this it's just pushing your ideology, your self-righteous. This isn't just an ideology. There are victims involved. We are not going to stop till they are free. We're not going to stop, mate. This isn't, this isn't the end. This is just the beginning, okay? When there are victims involved, that's what fuels us. That's what keeps us going. Now, Denham, look, buddy, um, I, if you are receiving threats, I know what it's like. I receive them all the time. As a result of your disgraceful hit piece bias crap funded by beef mogul Kerry Stokes, New, seven news bias media fake news. I received tons of death threats as well. And I received them every single day, dude. Okay, every single day. Now, if you wanna come up against the movement of justice to animals with your nonsense and your, you know, your closed minded in your square box, you know, meat for protein, we're hunters that hunt woolly mammoths, you're gonna be met with opposition. People are gonna call you out on it. We're defending innocent animals who can't defend themselves. And when you perpetuate and propagate this you know, humane slaughter, meat is healthy garbage on Channel 7 to millions of people, that causes damage, that causes harm to animals. And vegans are going to speak up about it. And we're not going to stop speaking up. So, you know, keep writing your articles, mate. They're not doing nothing. You think that what we're doing is not working. It is. It is. Nothing you say is going to stop the vegan movement. Even if I completely stop doing activism, that won't stop the vegan movement. It is growing exponentially around the world. And this is just the beginning Thanks for watching everyone. I'll leave the article link below. Don't send any death threats or anything to anyone if you do. Like, I don't even know. Are there any death threats? It said he was threatened. I don't really know. But, you know, keep it respectful, guys. Keep it on topic, you know. I understand this is an emotive topic for everyone. But, you know, especially with people like Denham Hinch, Cock, you know, try to keep the insults out of it and keep it factual. All right, guys. I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.